Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luke and in today's video, it's gonna be a short one. I just wanna show you a new feature that we've introduced in 2.2.0, which is actually still in beta. I do encourage you to download it. It is available from your profile page, your dashboard on motion.page. And if you could provide us with any feedback, that would be awesome. But basically we've introduced two new features, one of which I'm gonna show you today, and that is a cursor tooltip. So as you can see, when I hover over these elements, we can see their names coming up like that. And this is all being controlled in motion page using attributes. Another feature we've introduced, and I will be showing you this in a later video, uh, and that is a mouse follower. So basically on our website at the moment, we have this already implemented where when we move the cursor, you can have little circles or basically whatever you want following your cursor. But like I said, that will be in a future video. I'm not gonna go into that one today. Today, I'm just gonna show you this easy setup, how you can create tooltips. So first things first, let's go into Bricks Builder. So as you can see, I have these pictures already set up. I am using Violet from Core Framework just to make this easier. But all you need uh, is any element really. This works on any element as long as it has a specific attribute applied. So for this example, obviously let's use these images. So as you can see, we have an image here. And if I go to style attributes, currently it's empty as you can see. So I'm gonna show you how we can control this. Uh, so let's go ahead and add an attribute to this. Now the attribute name must be MP hyphen cursor hyphen tooltip. Now in motion page, it's going to look for this attribute name and whatever the value is, it will be displayed. So value, let's just do for example, John Doe. So one nice thing about using attributes is the values here, they can be dynamic. So you can also use dynamic data, which is very good. I'm gonna save this. And before I go to the next step, I'm just gonna do the same for every picture and I'm gonna make all the names kind of unique. So I'll be back with you in just a second. All right guys, so I've just gone ahead and added attributes to all of these images and given them some names. So I'm gonna save this once again and now I'm gonna open up motion page. All right, so as you can see, I'm using version 2.2.0. Uh, once again, this is the beta. And I'm just gonna go ahead here, create a new timeline and I'm gonna call this one custom tooltips. I'm gonna target the home page, but I do also wanna check this because wherever I have this um, attribute applied, on any page, I want this animation to appear. So I'm gonna make sure this one is toggled on. And then for the trigger, we're gonna use cursor tooltip. Now, as you can see, it says to add MP cursor tooltip, which we have done already here. And there's 15 images and as you can see, elements found 15, so that's good. And then we have some default values and properties in here, as you can see, so the max width is 200 pixels, the background is going to be white color, the text color is gonna be black. So if I just show you here, when I hover over these images, we do get the values coming through from the attributes. So it's very flexible guys, uh, you can even use variables. So for example, if you are using Core Framework, then you can put your variables in here and I'll just show you how that works. So for the background, I'm gonna use variable uh, BG surface and then for the color, let's use the body text. So that will be text body. So as you can see already, we have this uh, nice effect going on using variables. For the padding, let's use a space variable. I'm gonna use XS for our example for the padding. Uh, I'll just show you if I use L for example, then there's a huge space around as you can see. But let's put this back to XS. Border radius, let's do uh, radius S, something like that, nothing too big. And then the font size, I can set this to our variable as well. We'll do text M. So that's now going to be responsive I'm gonna add one more property here, just add a slight shadow. Box shadow, we'll use another variable. And for this, I'm gonna use a shadow L, large shadow. So just to pop it up a little bit more from the background. So that looks pretty good. Now the benefit of using variables is number one, it's gonna be responsive. Number two, you can control all of this from one space, uh, which will be in the core framework. And number three, if you are using a dark and light mode, that's gonna change automatically as well. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save timeline and let's go to the front. And as you can see, we have the tooltips coming up quite nice. Now I do wanna show you the dark mode situation. So if I just go here and add our theme toggle, 
Now, please do keep in mind this is coming from Core Framework, so I'll just throw that out there. Refresh. So as you can see, we have our tooltips, but when I change this to light mode, because we're using variables now, uh, you can see it's also changing with the light theme and dark theme. So there you have it guys, just a very simple tutorial today. I just wanted to introduce one of the new features in the beta. Uh, once again, yeah, if you have time, please do give it a test and we appreciate any feedback or bug reports that you might find. This is the whole reason we are doing the beta release. And just a quick disclaimer, please do not use this on production websites. Uh, it's in beta for a reason. So it's better if you do this on staging or you know a sandbox website, something like that, where you can test and play around with it. So like I said, in the next video, I will be showing you the other new feature, which is the mouse follower, the cursor follower. And I will be showing you how you can use this with dynamic data as well. So thanks for watching this very short tutorial and I'll be back very soon with the next video. Until then, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.